Okay, hello everybody. It's the sixth day of Christmas, 2015, and um, tonight we're looking at. Oh, and I forgot to get on their website. We're looking at Cronenberg, 1664, a beer that was introduced long after 1664, and um, it is produced in France. It's the most famous beer of France, the Cronenberg beers. Maybe not this one. I, in France itself, it may just be regular old 4.2% Cronenberg, but this is the 5% 1664, which was developed as sort of a little higher alcohol premium beer. Um, the company was established in 1664, and they have a whole line of beers. I was looking on their website. I mean, it's a big bunch of beers, and uh, some of them are very strong, like seven or 8% alcohol. and They were bought out by Carlsberg a while back. You know you know how that goes. A lot of companies are getting bought out by a lot of other companies. I love Carlsberg. Um, and uh, I bought this single and um, but let me all bought a, a six pack. Um, anyway it was established in northeastern France, but the thing about this company is that that's a part of France that they were always in kind of a um, dispute with Germany over the border. So it was part of France, and then in 1871 it became a German brewery again, or a German brewery, and then in 1918 it became a French brewery, and then in 1940 it became a German brewery, and then in 1945 it became a French brewery again. Okay. Uh, so who has not had this before? Never. Me. I had wow. this my first time. I had this was uh, last uh, last Friday, Christmas Day, with my folks, and wow. uh, very good. <laughs> my first time. Eric, you've had it. I have had this beer many times before. Uh, the first time I ever had this, um, I was going to uh, of all nerdy things, uh, Ren Fair. And uh, someone gave me a six pack of 1664 at Renfair, and uh, I really liked it. And ever since seems, then, I, I've always thought of it highly. Seems to fit the bill, I guess, for that kind of event. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's a 11.2 ounce bottle. We would prefer if it was bigger. It kind of looks like a. It kind of looks like a five ounce bottle. can. It looks like a Michelob bottle, an old school Michelob bottle. Oh uh, yeah. How much did you pay for yours? I paid uh, ten dollars for my. Oh, for your six pack. Yeah, I got one. I think for a dollar eighty nine in in Mansfield, Massachusetts. Yeah. Oh, uh, wow. my, mine was like a dollar twenty nine or a dollar thirty nine in Metairie. John, John, I always watch him drink out of this vase. This thing dry cracks me to up to no end. He's gonna plant flowers in his beer. Uh, oh, oh, that vase. <laughs> <like that. laughs> But let me introduce who we have tonight, and we may have other people joining. John Sharon of Indiana could not join because he contacted me today and said, unfortunately, he could not find the beer wherever he looked. Mm. He was getting irritated. He was like, why don't we do some beers everybody can find? I said, you know, it's funny because you think everybody can find it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's one of my pet peeves, which I'll discuss tonight. Go ahead. You can't yeah. find it. And Okay, so here's who we do have. And we may have Paul from Texas joining, but from out west, we have Eric Anderson from semi-rural California. From the south, we have myself from Louisiana. Jean-Pierre, the Beer and TV Ramble from Alabama. We have the girl next door, Maria Devon from Cheers. New York. And from New England, Massachusetts Beer Reviews, Thomas Meadow, also known as Eric. Hello. Hello. So, um, well... Of Bunch course, of the aroma, the uh, the head is very thick on this beer. Yes, it is. It's so highly carbonated a, beer. There's a little bit of lacing, just a little bit. My, very little for mine. Mine is lace city. I mean, I have to pour it very carefully to not just get a giant foam head. Yep, absolutely. No, I was pouring it in like I was aggressively angry. <laughs> Damn you, beer. Hey, one thing if y'all looked on their, their website, and they have a bunch of websites, like there's the one for America, and then they have the French website, which is all in French, so I was trying to read it. And um, 
they use a special, well, they say it's special. They use hops called Strissel Spalt. Mm -hmm. They make a big deal out of it. And the caviar, I, it says it's the caviar of hops. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> right. Well, hey, I mean, they they tout it. Um, well, let's go to New York first and get the aroma. I am not getting any skunk. Maria, what about you? I did. I had a moment of skunk, but it faded. And and now I just smell like a malty, an almost neutral malty scent. I'm not getting a whole lot of sweetness on the nose. I've got a, a very faint hint of DMS and what I'm going to call a, an herbal hop backing that's, that's kind of earthy. It's not minty cool like the Pilsner. It's more an earthy herbal. And it too is very faint. So I you know, I'd say it's a it's a good nose for the Euro Pale Lager. It, it smells like a premium lager, and I I'm not smelling any off scents or anything like that. I think they're using a uh, corn or rice in it. Oh, I don't know. I'm not smelling a whole lot of like anything. I would say is different. The only the only scent that I get that's not just like a grainy malty bready scent is that light little DMS. Yeah. And that's very faint, and that's fine for the style. A little bit of, like you say, green apple? No, uh, a little oh, bit of that, oh. or, or what am I talking about? Do you mess the cooked vegetable? The little, veg the little, the open little vegetable scent from the Pills Mall. Hmm. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's fine for the style. It's good for it. Okay. Uh, so you think it's a pretty good aroma? I do. Okay, now up there in the north, Eric. Um, if I if I had to compare it to any other beers that I've ever smelled or tried before, it's got to have that combination between sort of a, sort of a hop aroma of like a Pilsner or Kell. It's got a malty aroma of like a Heineken, and it's got an overall Pilsner smell. It's kind of reminding me of the Carlsberg, which is which seems very nice. In its aroma, I don't. I'm just assuming I could be wrong. That since it's considered a Euro Pale Lager, that it might not be made with any adjuncts. And if it's not, good job, uh, Cronenberg, for keeping it beer ingredient oriented. But it does have a nice biscuity, malty smell, um, white bread, uh, and it does have a little bit of like a floral or spicy kind of a hop aroma. It smells earthy and grassy and just refreshing. It smells nice. I like it. You could trick somebody into making making them think they're drinking Grolsch, huh? Yeah, maybe that's a, yeah, either Grolsch or Heineken. But I'm not. I I thought in the bottle I was getting skunk, but I think that's just its actual the actual beer's aroma and not skunk. Okay, now down south, um, the home of Mardi Gras, original Mardi Gras, corn uh, in America. John, <laughs> what do you think about it? The aroma. Well, the aroma has a little, um, to me, it kind of reminds me a little of um, a Lagunitas Czech uh, style Pilsner. Uh, maybe I could be off, but I think it's about there. Um, little little Heineken, it's it's um, has that, as we mentioned, a very sort of earthy, very down-earth sort of a feel to this beer. Um it's going real good for me, and like I say when my first time having it was uh, Christmas uh, Christmas Day with my folks, and uh, you know we, we liked it, and we were you know everybody saying you know this is pretty good, everybody said you know it's kind of better than Heineken, you know, and my dad said hey I need one more of this, and you know I picked up you know two six packs uh, of this, and um, it kind of has that feeling. Okay, and uh, the bottle I think it's the coolest looking bottle. I like it too. Love that the hour, that hourglass kind of shape. Yeah, and it says Brassi avec savoir faire. What does that mean? Brewed with uh, like swagger or something? Probably right. swagger and fair. Savoir faire doesn't that mean like kind of like you live in the good life? Like you know, like have you have like a swagger about your life or something? Okay, something well, like that. Yeah. Sixteen. Um, Imported by St. Killian Importing Company. That's where my bottle came from. Kingston, Kingston Massachusetts. Yeah. 
I bought mine in Jersey, so. That's right around the um, yep. Plymouth, Massachusetts area. Mm -hmm. There you go. Where the pilgrims were from. Mm. Or came into. Now, my aroma is similar to what y'all are saying. Like, I'm picking up, and boy, this lacing is so impressive. I'm telling you, this glass was clean, too. Um, yeah, still, hold it. Biscuity malt. A little bit of the grassy hop. Uh -huh. I'm not picking up any green apple, and I'm not picking up uh, cooked vegetable. I really don't pick that yeah. up. Uh, None of that to me. Mm -hmm. Just biscuity, just biscuity, maybe some cracker, uh, you know, some. Oh, oh good. And then, uh, hey, Paul. The website, the Cronenberg6064.com says. You should also be getting aromas of licorice and crystallized lemon, whatever that is. Yeah, means. I was about to say the lemon. I don't get licorice at all from this. I don't get licorice, but I definitely get lemon. Maybe red licorice, but not the Maybe. black. Okay, now Paul is joining us from Texas. I'm glad you could join us. You've had this before? I had it last night for the first time. <laughs> oh. And I just, pour, I just poured it. I had a really big head. Uh, stayed pretty good, too. Look at it. Check it out. That's what we were remarking about how 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 much head retention and foam retention the beer had. Sorry, I got my Samuel Smith glass. Sorry about that. But, oh, that's okay. That's sort of acceptable. We'll, we'll uh. <laughs> I mean, it's it's uh, sort of. it's part of Europe. I mean, it's all the same thing. If Better you than my so. glass. <laughs> yeah, you got the bulb. Yeah, that bulb glass. Um. <laughs> well, 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 um. What are you getting in the aroma, Paul? And then we're going out west. I mean, further. Oh, west. you know. I mean, wait, I get wait, that. Wait, you know, wait, I get wait, that. Wait, wait, wait. Mm. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's fine. I got, yeah, I get the bread crust. You know, the we call it the biscuity kind of smell. The, I don't get a lot of hops at all. I don't really smell it for sure. I don't smell it. I said. Um, yeah, a little bit of citrus. You know, a little bit of that lemony kind of smell. But it's pretty mild. You know, pretty mild smell. I, as far as I can tell. Okay. Uh, Eric. Yeah. California. Um, I mean, are we still on smell? Yeah. You already drank your beer. Well, <laughs> um, I mean, pretty much you guys covered most of what I was going to say. I mean, I definitely have the, the grassy notes, uh, and I definitely have uh, that kind of uh, lemony twinge as well. Um you know, kind of like almost like biscuity malts. So, I mean, pretty much everything I was going to say was already said. Okay. Well, let's get into the – yeah, because, I mean, there's only so much you can say about it. Let's go into yeah. the flavor, and then we'll give our overall impression and talk about if we would buy it again. And then John, John H.P. of the Beer and TV Ramble has a major rant he wants to do. He's, He's got a ramble. He's about oh, Yeah. Oh man, I'm glad I joined. I off so bad. Now, um, <laughs> I love I love rants. That's my favorite thing. You really could just go to that right now if you want. Okay, now yeah, tiger stripes on this. On now, this Maria. <laughs> oh yeah, the lacing is incredible. Maria, what do you think about the flavor? Now, everybody. I like the flavor. I think it's a it's a well constructed lager. Um, it it has mostly breadiness for flavor. The hops are terribly faint. Um, I'm only getting earthy flavor from them, like an earthy herbal. Um, it has a, a nice um, richness to the mouthfeel that's not heavy. There's a good carbonic bite in this, and that actually makes up the last moment of the flavor is that little bit of carbonic acid with that light little bit of DMS to finish this one, leaving the breadiness at the front of the palate and finishing the beer dry. There's not a lot of residual sweetness in this. It's, it's just all bready flavor. Um, I'm not tasting any sugar, so it's... It must be well attenuated. I'm not getting any alcohol on the palate. Like I said, no uh, diacetyl, no off sense or flavors. I think it's pretty good. No. Well, what was everyone else supposed to say? You're not supposed to do one that well. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us. Now, Just say uh, ditto. Just say ditto. Now, uh, Maria, Maria is a big time bit burger beer drinker. How do you think this holds up against something like Bitburger? I don't think it's even close to the hoppy qualities of the Pilsner. I think that as much as you might be tasting their earthiness and that earthy spice, 
that the level of bitterness doesn't come close to the pills. Um, this is still in your uh, premium lager category, mm -hmm. or standard lager category. Although they do finish the beer, they do balance the beer lovely. Um, it, it doesn't it doesn't sag into the finish. It's crisp all the way through, and the reason that it is is because the hops do kind of slide through with a little bit of bitterness um, so that it keeps it crisp and lets you lets you experience those bubbles at the very end. Mm. Okay. Well. Can I just go after her and just say what she said? <laughs> yeah, what do you think, Paul? I mean, that's I, mean, I pretty much totally agree. Right. Uh, Jean-Pierre kind of froze up, so he may have to drop off and come back. I see that. I see he's moving. He's moving to me. He's moving about. There you oh, go. My mind froze, but oh, there what is love? Take him off Baby, anyway. don't hurt me no more. Oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> Roxbury. Okay, now but, well, let's go to Eric since we were going geographically. Eric in the uh, north. This beer is definitely got. I would say. I would say the feel is a moderate. It's it's not too prickly on the tongue of the carbonation, but I think it's just right for the level. Although you do get a pretty good amount of a. Uh, Carbonic acid, as Maria would say. Yeah, sure. Um, I guess there is a little bit of a lemon or like a lemongrass feel, but as, again, Maria said, I definitely am getting a primarily a malty, bready, either like a white bread or a biscuity kind of a malty taste. And I think the – I don't think it's a – it's not really a hoppy beer. It's not supposed to be a hoppy beer, but I think it's on that grassy, earthy side if – Anybody understands what I mean by that? It, it definitely has that 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 fresh cut grass kind of a feel and sort of a sense to it. Yeah, I agree and, with that. And, and it's got it's it's got it's got a nice body. It's it's on the I think it's on the high side of light, but I think it's still a nice light, crisp, easy drinking <clears throat> beer. And I think it has a little bit. I think there might be is just a touch of like a. I don't know if it's corn prepared. syrup, but there might be a little bit of a corn syrupiness or some kind of a syrupiness, but it's very, very light in its sweetness. But otherwise, it's pretty nice. I like it. All right. Sean? Well, I always said um, with these beers, they're made, you know, the Zero Lagers, the, a the ABV may be between 4 and 5, but when you're drinking these, it kind of feels like there is more – in those beers. I don't know what it is, how they make them, or what they're doing, and how they produce them with hops or malts they're using, but it kind of feels like it has a little more kick to it, which is what I like in a beer. And whether it be Heineken, Pilsner, or Kell, this, you know, it's, it's a, you know, something like you said, I will go back and buy this again, versus how they do their beers. You know, nothing against the beers made here in this country, but it's just something about these beers overseas, the way they make them, the taste, the quality, Carlsberg is the same way, Grolsch, you know, the ABV may be, you know, between four or five, but it feels like it has a little more punch, and it's, it's and I like it, and, you know, it makes me go back to it, and it makes me, you know, the way they produce it, the way it's put together, it's like, it's good quality stuff, you know, so... Yeah, I'm really enjoying this beer right now. I agree with you, and um, I could drink a whole lot of it, like you know. But I, you know, I only ever drink 23, 22 to twenty four beers a week, so I wouldn't do it. But um, I mean, I would say I, I said I want to. I didn't say I would do it. But um, um, I think I'm picking up a little bitty bit of sweetness, though, Maria. Mm -hmm. so. A little bit, but yes. not not a lot. And um, how many sugar cubes would you give it? Like five. <laughs> out of five, um, two. That's what I would say too. And one or two hop, hop cones. Out of five. It, this beer might be on the Cyclops scale now. A lot of the companies are going, mm -hmm. they're going over to the Cyclops scale, which is a simplified description of beer. When they and they only use hop cones and sugar cubes. And they say it's a lot easier. To say. I have a, I have a question. Do we do we know exactly? Because I don't recall a lot of beers or really any beer. Do we know exactly what a Strissel Spalt hop is supposed to taste like inside of a beer? Well, or what that's supposed to do to the beer's flavor? The way they were talking is just like give a bite, which I guess it does. Yeah. Isn't it a bittering? Is it a bittering? 
hop oh. as well as a... Mm. I'm looking on this website called beerlegends.com, and they list the Schrissel Spot Hop, and they say that it's primarily used at, for aroma. That's oh, yeah. really well, what it's for, it's aroma. It does get the beer a lot of aroma. And also, one thing, Schrissel Spot comes from Alsace in mm -hmm. France, and that's where this beer is made, so... Yeah, yeah I've, I've actually driven through Strasbourg. And? And that's it. Oh. Well, Cronenberg, nice. Cronenberg is like a mile or two right outside of Strasbourg. It's it's basically the local brewery there. Mm -hmm. and, um, so that's the story that's with right. that. And it's a kind of a farming area, I know. Well, uh, last one, and that's then great. I want to talk about food. The last one, <coughs> all, the last two, I mean, Paul... And uh, Eric, what do y'all think about the flavor? I mean, I already said I agree with Maria, so I just move on with my life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Let me get out of here fast. The one thing that I don't think she mentioned in that insanely uh, all-encompassing <laughs> review she did um, is that, uh, and I do definitely get. Uh, kind of a tart flavor from it, mm. and uh, I do taste a little bit of uh, like apples and pears. I do. Um, yeah, I was gonna say green apple skin, but it's not strong. It's it's um, under yeah. underneath. Yeah, I guess you know it's got a little bit of that tartness, like a green apple, but it is is not uh, at all overpowering. It's just a little little uh, flavor. Um, that's about it. That's the only thing I can think of that she didn't mention. Okay, now, next, moving along. Yeah. Crazy kids back there. Who's doing those kids? Who's got those kids <laughs> making noise? What Not I mean, me. Where, where is that coming from? All right. Not me. That wouldn't be me. I don't have any kids. Oh, yeah, just... Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, Paul's got all these kids. They're probably getting And, they're, and they're, they're, there's one person taking care of all four of them right now, so imagine what they're doing. I bet that's... Mm -hmm. You know... That's, one thing I'll say about this, because um, I've, I've, I have had this beer quite a bit, um, and I have noticed that it is kind of, I mean, there's a large fluctuation from beer to beer, and sometimes they are very skunky, and sometimes they aren't. It's, it's not at all a universal thing. I mean, it's just, you know, I'm sure, you know, transportation <laughs> and the amount of light involved. and uh, Green bottles. Huh? Yeah. That's the situation. If they're leaving it out in the sun or if they're not. You know, so yeah. I'll I mean, I did it in a green bottle, but this beer that I'm drinking right now is not skunky at all. No. But I've had 1664s that were very skunky. So I think, I mean, it's just, it's interesting. Like mm -hmm. it's kind of what I'm not tasting this mm -hmm. that's noticeable to me right now is that I, I it's not a particular skunky beer. But when someone else says that it's skunky, I believe them because I've had this beer before. Being very skunky. Is this is this only brewed in Strasbourg? From my knowledge, it is. Yeah, so I could see why. I mean, transportation, obviously. Um, I remember watching uh, uh, Beer Goggles, that Terry K guy. He said that he had a Cronenberg that was brewed in the U.K., so they might brew it in different places for export. Mm -hmm. they might. Say, this, this bottle here says France. Yeah, but it seems like the United States is getting it direct from the source. Yeah, mine, mine says Strasbourg. That's good. Ordered from France, yeah, 5% alcohol. Um, last two things. Um. John's got a rant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want to hear. I don't, yeah, you think this that? beer? You think this beer would pair well with something like chicken on duty gumbo or um, like crawfish etouffee or maybe crawfish bisque? Yeah. A soup like that, you know, a shrimp bisque. Yeah. Blue cheese, something, something like that. Maybe is that too strong? A cheese, a no. gouda, something like that. No. Probably good. I mean, you would pair it with a lot of things. It's pretty mild, you know? Yeah. Go with barbecue. Yeah. Go with anything, really. Mussels. Absolutely. Mussels and white wine sauce. Clam chowder. Um. Well, <clears throat> would you buy it again? I would buy it again. I don't know. Eric, the two Eric's, would you buy it again? Yeah, you know what? I mean... I paid ten dollars for this six pack, and I think that's a little high. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I wish it was at least like eight ninety nine or seven ninety nine, I'd be way more likely to pick it up. Yeah. Um, 
But I do like it. I do think it's a very good beer. I mean, it's preferable, and especially if I'm not in the mood for a hoppy beer and I want something that's just crisp and refreshing, mm-hmm. this is a good pick. This is definitely a good pick for just a, a crisp, refreshing, simple, drinkable beer. Right. Okay. Maria, would you buy it again? Well, yeah, I would. It's a very bready lager, and I like it very much. Um, I, I don't know what the six pack would cost. I think that the, I think that the flavors of this one, because it's not terribly sweet, because it leaves so bready, and um, I think that that is the reason why people would choose not to buy this one instead of to buy this one again. But yeah, I would have this again. I think it's, you know, it's it's not exactly the smoothest finish I've ever had. You know, it has a little, just a little rough edge in the finish, but I like it. I think it's tremendous. I don't, you know, I don't see a reason why I wouldn't buy it again. I couldn't find an entire six-pack. That would stop me. Like, if I wanted a whole six-pack of this, I was out of luck. I had to get a single. Yeah, I didn't. I went to Martin Wine Cell, and they only sell singles of it. Um, I guess you Yeah, I, I would definitely have this as a choice. Um you know, among the among the loggers as a different, you know, because it is unique. It's not exactly the same as all the rest. Eric, okay. And Eric Anderson is saying he prefers this way better than, much more than Grolsch. I, I don't think this is way better than Grolsch. I think Grolsch is sweeter than this, actually. If I had to pick one and say I, I prefer the one that's less sweet, I'd say this one is less sweet than Grolsch. Yeah, I like, I like that, that it's not as sweet. Yes, I'm getting overrode, overridden. Um, <laughs> and I, I think Grolsch tends to be even skunkier. Like, Grolsch is almost always skunky. Like, every single Grolsch is, like, super skunky. Hmm. You're mad at me because you hate the Netherlands. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, uh-oh. Woo. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. Oh, they're going berserk. Now, um, I can y'all hear that. Golly. Oh, yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, we got we got really good microphones. Um, Apparently so. I guess I have a good microphone. Oh yeah, Paul. Uh, oh, I think this would go well with onion soup too. Okay, let's see. Fresh, uh, fresh onion soup oh, with yeah. uh, some Swiss cheese and French bread. Yeah, that's that, that oh, definitely yeah. work. Now, so uh, for French beer with French onion soup. Okay, I got it. Okay. <laughs> or any kind of onion soup. Now, French um, fries, French onion soup. What else? And Perrier. <laughs> French now, dressing. Now, this stuff is okay, a little better off dead. All right, Eric, I like it. Now, um, uh, so, Jean, you'd buy it again, I'm sure, huh? Yeah, I'll buy it again. And here comes my rant. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Here we go. Here we go. Here comes the rant. So ready. I'm, here comes the rant. Now, Turn it up, baby. here I am. I, I, I went home to New Jersey. I went to see my folks and spend the weekend with them for Christmas. And when you, when I saw that you're going to do Cronenberg, I said, okay, I'll look for it when I'm up in New Jersey. I seven of uh, the seven liquor stores, four of them within walking distance from my house. All of them had Cronenberg, and the one I went to, I was going to go see a friend of mine. As I stopped there, I said, pick one up on my way home. I said, great, and I saw the price, you know, seven ninety nine for a six pack. Wow, that's good. Said, I'm getting that. Right. No doubt. And I bought two six packs of it. They didn't have a twelve pack. I bought two six packs. You know, I can whatever I brought, you know, for myself. And then, of course, what I was gonna have, you know, for Christmas with my folks. And my dad loved it. My my, you know, everyone else. Remember that seven stores, seven stores in the in the uh, New Jersey in Montclair, New Jersey, and they're near within that region. Now I'll come down here to Mobile. You know, come back home, and I call five places I know that do craft beers. Of those five, only one of them had it, and one was going to charge me twelve dollars for oh, a six pack ew. of Cronenberg. And I said, "Hell no! This is the problem. Christ Why Christ is God. it where you are, Eric Anderson, and also Eric Thomas Metal, and Maria, and Jay, and even maybe you, Paul? Y'all can get singles and get whatever it is with no problem. You know, singles or even a six pack at dirt cheap prices. And I did a list." Alabama is ranked one of the top five places with the most expensive in terms of buying beer by you know taxes, whatever it is. And you guys in your states that I've mentioned are very dirt cheap. Even New York is cheap buying beer. And I'm frustrated that I'm having to pay 
12 bucks for beer, which I didn't pay. I said, you know what? You know, enough. So we got more of a Catholic heritage. <laughs> And well, you also you got the you got the church running everything up in Montgomery, you know, <laughs> in the leg, in the in in the state house, which is frustrating for me. I said, man, I want some cheaper. <laughs> remember, remember, before 2009, here in the state, everything that was sold here beer wise was six percent and under in terms of ABV, you know, yeah. beer wise. So you were stuck with you know the Keystones and the Bud Lights and the Bushes and you know whatever. And Lutheran areas are good too because I went to, oh look, I went to Wisconsin. They got some cheap beer in Wisconsin. Well, let me tell you, you can well, get a, brew a lot beer. of beer there too. Yeah, and they don't have too many restrictions in Wisconsin. I mean, I'm sure the beer lobby is a lot bigger in Wisconsin than it is in Alabama. Oh yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, with the, yeah. And I have pictures of children drinking, not drinking, but okay. Let me <laughs> Hey, John, John, they are John, drinking something like iced tea or whatever. But I've got pictures of children sitting at the bar in Wisconsin. Like in Wisconsin, you know, like kids can sit at the bar with their parents. And the same thing is as as is the case in New Orleans. I've been to bar rooms in New Orleans where the children are sitting at the table with the parents. At the bar, I mean, they're not drinking alcohol, but mm -hmm. they're sitting at the bar with the parents. And I don't know how many states allow that, but in New Orleans it was like, Oh well, and they tell the little girl, "We're leaving. Ring the bell." And she's ringing the bell, you know. So I'm like, "Well, yeah. you know, those children probably won't grow up to be alcoholics because they're around it, and they're not like denied the forbidden fruit." You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. As as Maria always says, and you guys always says, beer should be enjoyed by everybody, no matter where you're from. Exactly. Where your background is, beer should be enjoyed by everyone. And Amen. Well, John, John, do you have any luck? Do you ever go across the border over to Florida and? By beer Sometimes beer. I do, you know, and or Mississippi, you know, particularly, mm -hmm. and and those prices are pretty about reasonable, you oh, know, God. maybe about uh, ten dollars less, wow. maybe twenty dollars less compared to what I pay here in Alabama. But well, so, wait a minute, Florida's got some screwball uh, regulations too, like you can only buy four packs. What? Of yeah, can't, you, you can't buy. Six I didn't packs. see that in Florida, but yeah, man, I could be wrong. You can't but, buy a lot of malt liquor in Florida either. Oh yeah, you can buy it, but you cannot buy forty ounce bottles. Mm -hmm. They're like no, they only saw twenty two ounce bottles of King Cobra where I saw, them, and that's all they had. They didn't have anything else stronger than that. In Florida, they don't like people drinking forties because they'll drink too much, so they only sell quarts, thirty two ounce. Well, why couldn't you just buy two thirty two ounces? It's so stupid, you know. It's like, it's like dumbness, right? Facebook. Like, sounds like a <laughs> Massachusetts law. So instead of buying instead of buying one forty ounce, they'll buy two quarts. They'll or buy just buy a, or just buy a handle of rum and get drunk that way. They don't stop you from doing and, uh, that. And don't even start because if Paul in Texas starts ranting on about those kind of uh, things, it'll I, really because he'll I rant. Agree with with ale, Paul. Texas, and ale and everything, you know, as you say. Don't get yeah. started. Don't get Paul started. Well, mm. next week. <laughs> I believe in free markets. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah, well, I'm right there Amen, with brother. you. Right there with you. Well, um, so this was an interesting beer. And I'll say true free markets, not the crap we have here. Okay, you can move on. Sorry. <laughs> Amen. So you believe in free enterprise and not necessarily capitalism. Okay, but anyway. Um, right. <laughs> Crony, cronyism. As we have uh, <laughs> right. Now... <clears throat> Well, next week we have an interesting beer, also from Carlsberg Group. What? And it wasn't a beer that was bought. It wasn't a beer that was bought by Carlsberg, but it was a beer that was developed by Carlsberg in the 1950s and it was officially introduced in 1959. It really came out in the earlier 50s. But it's called Carlsberg Elephant Beer. Hell yeah! And it's a 7.2 percent super. Well, they call it strong beer. Now, like will, will, will Jean be able to buy that in Mobile? I don't know if I have ever seen I that here. I doubt I will, but I'll probably be able to look at it. If they do have it, it's probably going to charge me maybe 13 <laughs> or maybe $15 or whatever for it. Yeah, yeah, it might be expensive. You never know about that well, I bought the elephant for like a dollar thirty-nine for a single. Like I said, if like I can get signals, you know, that would be great. But Yeah. Now look, there's no, there's no craft beer movement in in Alabama anywhere. There right? is. Alabama I mean, we and, and Jay could Jay could say this. I mean, I know his daughter goes to Alabama, but um, you look mm. at uh, Back Forty Beer Company, 
look at good people. I mean, there are a lot of craft beers companies up there, but unfortunately, you know, you know, every city you go to, for whatever the reason, whether it be Huntsville, Tuscaloosa, Mobile, Montgomery, you know, it's just that you know, you'll see this here in singles, and you'll see that in a six pack, or it won't be in Mobile. It'll happen in Huntsville, but it won't be in Tuscaloosa or Birmingham for whatever the reason. Um, I yeah, mean, here in this not, area, she's go ahead. Always, yeah, she's always bragging about all these craft beer places up there in Tuscaloosa, and she's saying um, we ought to uh, try this and we ought to try that. So um, when I go up there again one day, we might, if we have time, go check out some craft brew, brew pubs, whatnot. Uh, uh, Eric, that's the website, Eric. Very good. The taxfoundation.org. That's what I'm talking about right there. Oh, that's too hot. Now, Eric of California, I think a lot of us can get the Vihan Stefaner beers, and maybe we could examine those down the road. Yeah. Those, are, those are really fun. Vihan Stefaner is a fun company. They're such, to a, it's, they're, they're such good beers for you would not believe. If you, if you haven't bought those beers before anybody, you would not believe how good they are for how dirt cheap they are. Yeah. Well, I, let me... Yes, you're right. World class stuff for budget prices. Let me say this, Jean. You went to New Jersey. I was in New Jersey back in June, and I was buying so much interesting beer in New Jersey. They had so many Polish beers. I was like in, I was in Polish beer heaven. And I, I just, I stopped. Like I'm just driving down U.S. Highway one, la la la, and I see this liquor store, and I said, I gotta go. So I stopped. And I went in there. It was a beautiful store too, by the way. And um. Oh, I just started buying. I was just, I filled my whole trunk up. Prices were low, and I was like, "Oh no, I'll never, I may never get this chance again." So I it was like, it was like smoking the bandit, man. I was like, <laughs> smoking the bandit, and uh, it was so exciting. So anyway, um, next week is Carlsberg Elephant, a very interesting beer. And it's going to be a lot stronger flavor than what we're drinking. But boy, just think if we could get the Carlsberg. Elephant, super strong, ten point. What is it? They're showing on the website. Website, ten point seven percent. Yeah, too, too bad. Would we that can't. be? Huh? Go, go ahead, Eric. I'm sorry. I was gonna say, too bad we can't get the uh, the Carlsberg Jacobson, which is a very, really, really high ABV barley wine they make. Yeah, we only get like a little. We just get a little tease of what Carlsberg makes. It's sort of yeah. like with Gross. Gross gives us gross. We enjoy gross. But how come we can't get the gross cannon? That's 11% hey, uh, alcohol. I'm about to bug out, everybody. I'm going to see you later. All right, we'll see you. Bye. All right, Paul. Happy New Year, Paul. Happy New Enjoyed Year. Enjoyed it. Paul. Happy New Year, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, would would, I'd like would to those beers be considered malt liquors, uh, Jay, Eric? Um, the elephant, I think, would be considered a malt liquor if you looked at it in an American it's, standard. I've tried to explain to people a million times. That's a meaningless term, okay? Thank you. Fine. Finally. Finally. Term. High gravity lager. That's what. Like it I is. said, American standards would probably consider it a malt liquor. Oh yeah, because in in every all, all the other countries, they don't call it that. They just call it a so strong extra, beer. Yeah, extra strong beer. Mm -hmm. And like in Denmark, they got Carlsberg Elephant, and they got Carlsberg Strong Elephant. Okay, you know, nobody goes crazy over it. They just drink it. All right, so, um, and I would like to try all those because I'm not opposed to trying super strong beers like Santa Claus. Spot and Optimator. Yeah. Celebrator. Yeah, I got a problem trying stuff like Camo and Axe Head. I am right. quick. that, man. I have been talking to a lot of people around here. I've been talking to distributors. I've been talking to... Like all those beers are drying up, like around here. Like I'm telling you, it's all like IPAs. It's all like local craft beer. Good. Good. I mean, that's cool. I'm all about like this explosion in craft beers and like IPAs. But I'm I want the damn you know European beers. I don't. I want my Optimator. I want that option. I want the beers. Oh, right. beers. oh yeah. yeah, right. I thought you were talking about dog biting camo. Yeah, I hope they. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but in general, I think Eric Anderson's right. It, it, as far as as far as the option, I know that he. I know that California, that Southern California area, it, is so dominated by all these IPA beer brands that that's all you get almost. 
Well, I it's, it's been it's been I recently. That, uh, I could mention that dog bite is brewed by Genesee, but uh, all right. Well, um, you just did. Uh, <laughs> I do oh. have to mention that I do live in Ojai, this like little tiny bumfuck town. I don't live. <laughs> I don't live in like San Francisco, where I'm sure I could go and get almost any beer at oh, all. All right. You know what I mean, I. If you're living in a place, but I mean, I live in this little tiny rural town. I mean, even if I'm going to go to Ventura, you know, is is so. But in this little town, it, the options have become so limited. It's 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 really insane. And all these beers I used to love, all these European beers, are completely gone. I wonder how much it is the rest of the state that I haven't gone out. And it's pretty recent. It's been in the last year that this has really happened to this point. It look, size matters because I went to. I live around New Orleans, and the beer variety here is enormous, right? Plus, we're near the coast, so that's even bigger. I went to New York City a bunch of times, and their variety is incredible. It's like you could never buy – I mean, you, you would have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars, and you would have to rent a car just or a, a trailer to haul it all back. It's incredible. So if you live in a small town, well, it's going to be limited because – it's not going to do the store much good to have a bunch of beer sitting on, sitting on the shelf rotting, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, stores are not going to stores are not going to it's it's obvious. Stores are not going to keep beers on the shelf that aren't going to sell because obviously they're just going to get old and nobody's even less people are going to buy them when they're old, I would think. Yeah, well, and see, I live in a town. I live in a town with only 25,000 people and so or maybe it's 27,000, but it's not that many. And okay, the store one mile away has a premier craft beer selection, but they struggle because people buy one and they try it and they try another one and they don't go back to it, right? So the stuff just sets there and it goes bad and you know about that, Maria, because you and Maria, Maria and myself do the same thing. We buy one, try it, okay, fine, we go to something else. We're not going to sit there and try to finance some store that chose to, you know, buy this enormous amount of inventory. It's not our problem. We didn't tell them to do it. I like having Ooh. the option. I like having the option uh, if I can get a singular, just to get a singular, because every week, I mean, I mean, I generally do get a six pack because that's what I can find these beers in. But I, if I can get a single of a can or a forty ounce bottle or just a bottle, I'll just get one of those because I don't always want to buy a six pack and just have all this beer in the fridge. I mean, I would drink it, but I don't want to, you know, seem like I'm a beer drinker every day and I have a beer with dinner every single day. Right. But, I don't want to do that. Maria, what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say I don't think the bottle shop um, has the choice that a lot of people think they do. I think yeah. that when you go into the bottle shop and you see exactly. a lot of old stock, you're saying, why did that guy choose to buy all this old beer to, you it's know, put all this old beer out? I don't think that they did. I think that what happens a lot of times is a distributor comes in and says, well, we're not going to give you – um, you know, this beer, unless you buy X, Y, Z of these other beers, and that's how they get stuck with tons of old yeah. stuff. Um, and the other thing they get stuck with is, like, this beer, okay, where's the freshness date on this? I, nope. I have no idea. The European stuff could sit forever. You just never know. Um, and that's because it's not it's not dated clearly so that you can know if you're buying a fresh beer or not. So, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why stock will sit and you can't always tell if something's fresh just because it's new and that's, that's the other true. thing you know like um, I live in Ithaca New York Ithaca beer is literally up the road for me how come the the flower power in the grocery store is two months old mm. you know it, it just Not good it just depends yeah right it should be the freshest you can get a hold of right yeah, exactly. Or, or like, why does why do people in Illinois have Southern Tier two times Smash and I don't? I don't know. How come you know Sweetwater came to the bottle shop here in Ithaca and all their beer was out of date by the time it was on the shelf? So who knows? Remember that. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, folks. And this was pretty interesting. And so next week, get ready for Africa and get ready for elephants. Carlsberg brand. Yeah.